Building a CRUD app in 2024 and beyond is not easy. They do have a style sheet. It's got tons of classes. Look at this span element, for example. How do we take this stuff and turn it into a rectangle and put it on the screen? Hey, I'm Tyler. I spent two years building my own calendar app. And during that time, I studied Google Calendar religiously. Now I'm taking everything I've learned, I'm showing you the app, and I'm explaining how it really works behind the scenes. Let's go. We gotta start with the big picture. So this is a basic architecture of the app and all its other resources. All right, architecture in three parts. First part is the basic web app stuff, JavaScript, CSS, HTML. We have some stack assets that, like the images, for example, are stored in cached storage in the browser. And then if you enable offline mode, that calendar data is in indexed DB. And then we're also pulling in some stuff from a CDN, Google CDN called GStatic, like fonts, for example. Then those JavaScript files are making requests to an API, of course, and that is mostly the Google Calendar API. And also some other ones like contacts, meetings, auth, there's definitely more. And each of them have their own data store. And I'm not sure what kind of storage it is, but somewhere in the cloud, your data is being stored. Then finally, we have services that are also calling those APIs without you directly doing anything to check that the app is still alive, for example, to synchronize with other calendars and to time out how to notify you. Very simplified version. All right, time to dig into the code. Finally, here's the HTML, the JavaScript, and the CSS that brings it all together on the UI side. All right, we're gonna talk about styles now. They do have a style sheet. It's got tons of classes. They use class names heavily, and then they target those class names in their JavaScript. Old school way of doing it, but it obviously still works. They are using the fonts called Product Sans and Roboto, which are both developed by Google. They do not have a framework that I am aware of. And what I mean is something like React or Svelte or Vue or Angular, things that have come about in the JavaScript community after Google, Google Calendar was built. I would have guessed it would have been Angular, but I don't see it, I don't see any signs of it. Instead, what I think they're doing is they're just using JavaScript, CSS, and some homegrown solutions like Raw Dog in it, and that's awesome, but it's just been a while since I've seen an app like this. They do have a JavaScript compiler that they built called the Closure Library, which improves the speed of common JavaScript tasks. They are using a phone number parser, which is open sourced to parse phone numbers, but mostly it's, it's just JavaScript. They chunk their bundle into 28 different JavaScript files. They're minified, obviously, and they do a really good job of obfuscating the ID. So they're not the same across different bundles and you can't hack into them as easily. Like look at this span element, for example, and how much work they're doing to come up with the, the accurate name for it, the class name for it. All right, we talked about JavaScript, the CSS. Now it's time to talk about the HTML, the old markup. Any calendar app is gonna have a certain hierarchy. There's gonna be an all day row, a main grid, and then some other layers. So the main grid will have rows and columns and uh, the all day row is just one big row on the top. And then the other layers are there for things like letting you drag things on top of it or uh, toast messages or like those pop-up things, things that you don't want just contained within the calendar grid. So that's what we're seeing here. There's also the event dialogues, like there's one that goes on the grid, like a smaller one. And then there's that full page one with unnecessarily large, but it's there for you to focus on creating the event. And then of course we have the settings page too. Put my fancy hat on because things are getting fancy now. We're gonna talk about cool JavaScript stuff that's going on to make this stuff work. So we have our grid and we know events look something like this in terms of the data they're provided. And how do we take this stuff and turn it into a rectangle and put it on the screen in the right place? There are two main steps to do that. You need to calculate the shape of the rectangle and then you need to calculate the X and Y coordinates for where to place that relative to the screen you're looking at. And you get those values through a combination of measuring the DOM, calculating how many minutes an event is, and then 
dividing that and routing it based on your current time interval. So how, how long events can be. So Google does it in 15 minute increments, for example, all while being aware of some gotchas and edge cases like events that span multiple weeks or overlapping events and Google, this is how they're doing it. They've, they've done it like for most cases. If you're curious to dig into the algorithm stuff that makes that all work in like a very detailed sense, you can check out my open source version going to this repo and searching for the git position file. Google Calendar does more or less the same thing that's going on there. Another interesting JavaScript problem to solve is what happens when two events share the same times. You don't want them to hide behind each other where one blocks the other one and you have to come up with some way to make sure they're overlapping but are also both legible this is um this is kind of tough for example mine they're just they cover up each other and it's not great i couldn't find the javascript code that google calendar is using to do their kind of over overlapping style like this so i studied the ui and came up with this pseudo code now i personally prefer how Outlook does it. So the difference is Outlook is like squishing it all into one column, just making the events uh, length narrower or shorter. I think it's a little easier on the eyes, but Google's coming with a unique way to overlap things. So not one event doesn't hide another one. They're both respectable. Nonetheless, if you want to look at the code, the pseudo code, pause it, check it here. That is another interesting problem you got to come up with. They've done a good job with it. Overall, here's the quality of the code based on Lighthouse scores and my own subjective review of all of the source files I could see. Based on this Lighthouse report I ran, their accessibility is pretty solid and their performance is pretty not good. However, I want to give them a pass on the performance piece because um, they're not trying to be really good <laughs> at performance. They're trying to be really stable and reliable and easy to understand. So yeah, there are a lot of things that you can see they're not implementing, but it's not like they're trying to do it and they're just failing. They're just, they're just not doing it. When I've looked at this JavaScript code, I see good practices. I see consistency. I see cleanliness. It's just, it's just old. <laughs> and so they're not going to be able to compete with the modern things, techniques, tools that have come out that are, that can have like really good scores, but um, I don't think this is necessarily such a bad thing to have a lower performance. Two things I want to leave you with. One, building a CRUD app in 2024 and beyond is not easy. This Google Calendar has been in maintenance mode for so long and you've seen how much stuff is going on just to keep it all running. There's a lot, there's a lot. I wish I would have known how complicated it was before I started my own, <laughs> but I appreciate how much work goes into just making a simple app. Secondly, given how complicated and hard this stuff is, I am so impressed with how reliable this client and their API have been. They have done enough to keep users on their platform and out of Outlook and iCal, which I think is their goal. They're not making direct revenue from this, so they shouldn't overinvest in becoming a premium client. So they've nailed it. And on top of that, they, their API and this UI have enabled new startups and apps to be built upon them so they've kind of become the infrastructure of all things calendaring along with those other two platforms we talked about i hope you learned something i'm super impressed thanks google calendar for making a cool app bye